So today, <clears throat> I uh, today we have the Chicago Lyric Competition, the Opera Competition. It's how they pick the people that are going to be gonna be like joining us next year and stuff. I'm not able to record the singing portion, but we have kind of a little like meet and greet afterwards and like they announce the winners and stuff like that. And I'm gonna try and get some of that on my phone because I can't bring this big thing. So that's how my Sunday is so far. <laughs> but once I get back, we'll continue this. But I'm gonna try and get some footage on my phone. So I'll try. <laughs> so I uh, just got done with the singing and the, ooh. Skateboarding at work again. Um, just got done with the singing and the uh, and the little reception thing we had afterwards for the donors and stuff like that. Um, we have three new members of the of the Ryan Opera Center family. Only real men ride a skateboard when they're wearing a suit. So <clears throat> I sang pretty well. I was pretty happy with it. Uh, going out to get some food now. Back now from the competition. Went really well. Uh, we had a little reception afterwards for everybody and wasn't bad. I really didn't get to record anything when I was there. It's interesting because the way I was hired at Chicago uh, was kind of odd. So normally they use this competition to find... Hey. Sorry, I'm holding, I'm holding little bits. Like a little baby. Um, anyway, so normally they use the competition to find the artists that will be used for the following season. So the winners kind of depend on what they're looking for that year and stuff like that and like who they have in the program and who they need more of. Oh, it's okay. Sorry, I'm trying to speak a little softer because... He's a little sleepy. So normally that's how people get chosen for, you know, for the program. But I guess the year that I was hired, they didn't hear any baritones that really fit what they wanted. And uh, they held a separate audition. And they had contacted this guy named Matthew Epstein, who at one time was kind of the biggest name as far as uh, opera agents go. He's now more of a consultant for like opera companies and schools and particularly for schools, what he'll do is he'll come and, and have kind of a master class, like the one you saw me in with Joyce Tidonato, which I will link right there and down below. In case you haven't seen it, it's me singing an aria with her. But he'll come to schools and he'll hold kind of mock audition classes where, you know, like four singers or something will get up and do a fake audition. So we'll prepare just like a regular audition, we'll bring our suits, we'll bring our music, we'll bring everything exactly the same. And we'll, uh, he kind of is the panel, the audition panel, but then like other students are there to watch. So you sing for everybody, he calls a second aria, which is kind of normally what happens. For those of you who don't know in, in opera auditions, if you're auditioning for a house, usually you'll pick what you start with and then they could stop you they don't normally, but they could. Then they'll most of the time ask for a second piece. Sometimes they'll ask for like a piece of a third piece. You know, it depends on kind of which house and what they're doing and stuff like that, um, what they're doing next season. So he came to Juilliard and he did this. He did a mock audition class. He does it every year. He comes twice a year. He'll come in the beginning of the year and then he'll come at the end of the year and work with the same group of singers kind of to kind of like discuss like um, how far they've come. So in my second year at Juilliard, my last year there, I was participating in this kind of mock audition masterclass kind of a thing. And I sang for him, we got along really, really well. And he was actually one of the people who gave me kind of his blessing to go and join Celtic Thunder when I got the offer for the job. Uh, <clears throat> he's just kind of like one of the fathers of opera at this point with the new gen the young generation and even the, the generation before us he is kind of the overseer he really he he knows obviously he knows his stuff he knows how to talk to singers he knows how to think like a singer and he knows kind of how to lay out steps for a singer for like the future of their career so anyway so the head of the chicago program called him and said we didn't really find any baritones we like do you know anybody 
and he was like, yeah, I know this one kid, but he's singing in an Irish boy band. No, um, but uh, so he said, I know this one guy, his name's Emmett O'Hanlon, you should shoot him an email. So they shot me an email and, uh, and they said, would you come up for a special audition? And I didn't, I didn't think I'd get it because I, I was kind of, I'm kind of too young for the program for like baritones and I don't know, I just didn't think I'd get it. I thought it would be a great opportunity for me to sing for the people at Chicago Lyric. So I said, sure, you know, I got brought up and there was four people total and I remember it was the only audition and I hope it will continue to be the only audition where this happened, but all four of us were on stage. We were all like side of stage while the other one, others were singing, which is terrifying. Usually that does not happen. You're like off, you know, not on, not side of stage. But I think it was because they had to kind of squeeze in the auditions and there was other rehearsals going on. So I remember thinking, and I, I don't want to sound full of myself. I'm a very humble person, especially about my voice. Uh, I strive to be the best, but I there are singers that I know I will never be as good as because, you know, you just, you know. But anyway, so I remember sitting there and I was watching and I was thinking like I was third. And I remember thinking the first guy was like, meh. And then I remember the second guy was like, pretty good but he was more of a, a more of a bass baritone and I'm a baritone and I, I was thinking like, well, they're looking for like a baritone, so hopefully that'll help. And then I sang and I thought I sang really well. The audition went really smoothly. I sang three arias, which is like a big deal if they're gonna ask for three full arias. Uh, actually, no, I sang four, four arias out of five. You normally, you bring five arias. So I sang four arias. And then the last guy went and he was the right age, he looked awesome on stage, and he sounded so good. He had such a good voice. And so I thought like, oh, well, okay, he'll get this, but uh, didn't work out that way, I got it. So anyway, so we normally they have this competition, and every year that's how they kind of decide who's gonna be joining the program. So as I said earlier, we have three new members of the Chicago Lyric family. One of them is a soprano and two of them are tenors. I know the two tenors. I, I, I hadn't ever met the soprano before, but she's amazing. Uh, I knew the tenors from competitions in New York, um, from like, you know, just the circuit. You get to know people. Yeah, they're fantastic singers. They're really cool people. I think that one of the tenors was saying he might want to start vlogging, like starting his own vlog, so I might have a fellow vlogger next year. That would, that would be cool. So I'm sorry I couldn't record any of the actual competition, but you know, rules are rules. I wish I could, but I couldn't. Although all is not lost because this guy is just like falling asleep in my arms. Hey. <laughs> I'm so happy. Yeah, so I was gonna do like kind of a big talk in this vlog about perception. It's something I've been thinking about recently a lot, and not perception in like the, in the literal sense of the word, where it's using your senses to describe or realize your environment, not that, but more of perception in our own perception and how it affects our opinions of the just things. Because there's been some really odd stuff going on this year, obviously with like the election, and I promise I'm not gonna get political when I talk about this. It's, I've read a lot of articles that have been coming out about this, lots of social-based studies that have happened. It's just really odd how it seems that people's perceptions so strongly influence their opinions rather than real fact. You know, I don't know. Anyway, so I'll probably do that tomorrow. That'd be like, a, that'd be a good Monday topic, I think. If not Monday, too, it'll happen. Uh, it's definitely something I want to talk about. I don't want it to be too academic, but it's definitely going to be one of those like story timey videos, kind of like that one I did about alcohol when I was hungover. <laughs> not too academic, a little bit educational, a lot of bit fun, but really kind of, it's more, this is more of a, I'm not doing it to be funny, but honestly, it's just something I've been thinking about, and I've noticed that with these vlogs, it's given me an opportunity to talk things out, and I don't necessarily feel like it's me just talking it out to myself, because you guys are so good about responding in comments and, and letting me know what you think, and I love that, because that really does help me reevaluate the way I think about things. Forget about that, We're, we'll talk about that probably tomorrow or something. It's been a long day, 
and I'm tuckered out, and this guy is obviously tuckered out. Presley is sleeping up on the kitty castle. This guy's just purring away. So I'm gonna let you guys go, and I'm gonna go snuggle the crap out of this guy. Yeah. Yeah. I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.